Hey y'all, hi. I'm back, back, back again. I feel like I just filmed a video like this, applying a makeup look using makeup that I'm testing and that I've been using a little bit, but that I'm not quite ready to give my final verdict on preposition. So it's kind of like somewhere in between a first impressions and a full thorough deep dive review on a whole bunch of products that I'm going to be using. But I'm excited because I do want to showcase for you a technique that I've been using on my eyes. Actually, when it gets to the eyes, I'm not gonna be using new products, but I am going to be using a new technique. And I hope that it's okay. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. What's happening is that my work, my non YouTube work is totally kicking my butt right now. So it's been a little bit hard to get it together to produce more organized and robust videos. I'm in this middle space. I basically have three jobs and two of them make money and one of them doesn't make money. The one that doesn't make money is my writing work. It makes a little bit of money from time to time, but that's an artistic career that I'm fostering without respect to how much income it brings me. The other two jobs are YouTube and this grant writing work that I do. And the grant writing is just like, like off the hook in January. I only have about one and a half brain cells left. So in this video, I'm gonna take those one and a half brain cells and this makeup and just play, basically. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm glad you're here. I'm Hannah. This is a beauty channel. I love beauty, but I used to have an overspending problem. So even though I now review makeup that I buy for review and that brands send for free for me to review, I try to stay grounded in reality. I know that a lot of people can't afford to just buy, buy, buy makeup. So if that sounds good to you, I hope you'll subscribe. And let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. I have a couple of layers of skincare on, but I, my skin, it's just, it's so dry right now because I think it's just because of the heating because it's the winter here. So I'm going to put another layer of this on. I might actually do a couple layers. It's the Refer Hydration Cream, and this is about to launch. I hope that it's launched by the time this video goes up. Refer is the brush brand that I really love. I almost exclusively use their brushes. And this is their first foray into skincare. I've been using it for a couple days. That's what it looks like. It looks kind of like a gel cream. It's got that sort of milky translucency. And it is lightweight, but it it's beefier than some gel creams. It's definitely beefier than the one from Make that I've been using. It is light enough to layer. Like it doesn't feel totally absurd. The idea of putting another layer of the same thing on top, especially on my very dry skin right now. But I think of it as like a sealant. It's really good as the last layer in a morning routine because it feels like it seals over all of the watery skincare products that I've put onto my skin and locks them in. And it leaves behind this glassy, glossy finish. I know my skin was looking pretty shiny already because I did, again, have some other skincare on it, but hopefully you'll be able to see that this has really kicked it up a notch. At close range, in real life, it's notable. The finish is notable. I'm putting a little bit more on my cheeks. Because of that, I've kind of been using it like a hybrid skincare product and like illuminating primer, even though it doesn't have any illuminating particles in it. So it's not as though it's makeup of any kind. I mean, there's nothing reflective. There's no mica in it. But this effect, that very glossy, the effect will stay. That's not just because the product is freshly applied. That's like the way that it looks when it's on the skin. And I've seen it shining through the makeup that I've been applying. So I'm hoping that it'll do that today. The greased balloon. I know that the skincare world calls it glass skin, but I call it the greased balloon. Okay, let's actually go straight into complexion. I did put a little bit of refi brow sculpt in my brows, which reminds me to say, I was watching Trixie Mattel's best, of, like favorite beauty products or best of beauty 2021 or something. And she wasn't talking about the brow pomade. She was talking about the bronzer, actually. One of one of Refi's other products was in Trixie's best of beauty video. And Trixie called it Refi, held up the Refi bronzer and was like, I love this Refi bronzer. And I felt totally vindicated because I thought that it was Refi at the beginning. And I was like, how is everybody not thinking that it's Refi? I feel like when you look at R-E-F-Y, immediately it registers in the brain as Refi. And it's taken, it's been like a, a training, an intensive training regimen to get myself to start saying refi, which is apparently how it's pronounced. So I'm in the middle of testing the Salt New York Sneaky Balm. 
and that's what I'm going to experiment with today. This right here is the lightest shade of Sneaky Balm, and this white pan next to it is the shade adjuster in the, like, complexion formula from Salt New York. So the, the white one over here is the lip and cheek shade adjuster, but this one, I think it's the same as or similar to the bronzer and contour formula. And I'm gonna mix them together because I'll cover this in my full review of this product, but the lightest shade isn't light enough to really do the whole job of covering the redness, evening out my skin tone without my face looking a couple shades darker than the rest of my body. And I've had the most success so far with mixing them pretty much in equal parts. So I've gotten a good bit of both of them onto the back of my hand, and I'm gonna mix them together with my depotting tool, which this is by Z Palette, this like rainbow depotting tool. And I think it's not available anymore. The last time I went to link it, it wasn't, but depotting tools like this, there are plenty of them available. So I'll find one that's very similar to it and I'll try to remember to link it. I find that I have the best luck with this when I go in with my finger. So I mix them together with the tool. And then I go in with my finger to really smear them together because the warmth of my finger is helping to melt the product and make sure that the two colors are totally mixed and there aren't any little pockets of one or the other left. That looks like a really good color for me. I'm going to do something that I haven't done yet. I'm gonna use a brush for this. I've been just experimenting with a sponge. Of course, I wanna give it a thorough test. So today I'm going to try blending it with a brush. It applies beautifully with the fingers as well. I've done that a good bit, but I haven't really gone for like full brush application. It's definitely sneaky. I mean, you can't see it on my face. This is a really good product for people who abhor the visible signs of makeup on the complexion. Like if you really don't want people to know that you've put makeup onto your skin, this is a good starting place. And I really like it when you can't see makeup on my complexion. That's like one of the things that I'm looking for in a complexion product, but I haven't gotten enough coverage for me today for filming, but I'm gonna go in with a little bit more product and just see how far I can take it. It's going great with a brush too. I feel like this is a pretty decent amount of coverage and I've definitely turned this part of my face, which was redder. I've definitely turned it the color of the product and the color of a lot of my skin. This spot right here is a very dark spot. It's like a healing blemish. Nothing covers it completely. Right now I'm having to go back and really delicately spot conceal and alternate with cream product and powder if I wanna get it fully covered, which I actually don't really care that much about. The rest of my skin all around that spot has very good coverage with this second layer of application of this product with a brush. But I like that. I like the natural look of it on this side. I might even prefer it. And it looks really good layered over the refer cream. They're working together. They have the same goals. So on this second layer of application, I've definitely been stippling the brush. I've been like pushing the product into my skin by stippling the brush. I do feel like if with this much of this balm on my face, if I were going swirly, swirly, swirly in circles like I was when I was initially applying it, I think I would be getting some streaks. And I'm trying to get an even final finish. So I've, I've been doing this and it's working. It's giving me exactly what I want. I feel like it doesn't push the product into the skin quite as much as a sponge, but I'm definitely getting a beautiful, smooth finish. It'll be really interesting to see how this wears over the course of the day. I am going to put a little bit, it's not over here, none of it's over here, a little bit of this Kevin Aquan Neo highlighter in Sahara on my neck. And I think I probably want just the merest touch of powder around my mouth and under my eyes and maybe a tiny bit on the center of my forehead. I only really have one powder. It's this one from Givenchy. I have continued to test the ColourPop one. I'm a little bit more scared of it because it's a little more heavy duty and I, I don't want to interfere too much with what this balm is going to do over the course of the day because I'm trying to really get a good sense of it for the review. But the ColourPop one, it's kind of still in rotation. It would actually probably be the thing for cover this dark spot. Maybe I'll grab it. It's the Pretty Fresh powder. And it's weird to have this because I, I wouldn't have bought it myself. It's not the kind of thing I've ever bought for myself, but I've been finding it useful for these little tasks. Okay, let's move on to the eyes and we'll see kind of how this complexion fares as it warms up on my skin during the time it takes me to do my eyes. I mean, right now it looks really good. I, it's It's been so fun to test. I've always struggled with complexion products because it's hard to find a match for my skin tone. 
And it's been a journey figuring out what I really like and what I really want. And lately, I just feel like I've been trying out some real bangers. And it's fun. It's exciting. It's not usually the part of makeup that makes my heart sore. And lately, it kind of has been. But so has this technique. So here's how it all started. When I filmed, what was it the video? I think it was just the review of this palette, the Pat McGrath Midnight Sun palette. When I was filming the overhead portion for that video, was that, was it that video? No, it was the shiniest eyeshadows. It was the wet look eyeshadow video. When I was filming the overhead portion that included swatches from this palette, I started playing with the eyeshadows with water. I was very impressed by basically the liquid metal that I was getting from mixing, especially this eyeshadow with water. And I said I would try to come back and do a demonstration of those techniques on the eyes. So since then, I've been playing with these eyeshadows with water on the eyes. I actually don't really have it in me, I think, today to do like a full look, which I do want to do. I want to do like a really editorial look, but it's not what I want to be wearing today. And I also don't feel like I have the bandwidth for that today. There are two things that I want to do when it comes to demonstrating this technique. One is to do a whole video where there's like an elaborate editorial look featuring a bunch of eyeshadows from this Pat McGrath palette. But in playing with this technique, I've gotten curious about it and I've started testing it on other eyeshadows. Because the thing is that these shadows, these four special shades from Pat McGrath are apparently designed to be mixed with water and mixing medium. That's like the way to use them and that's how I got onto this. But I have been mixing almost every eyeshadow I own with water, like a bunch of different formulas, even ones you would think wouldn't mix with water and painting them onto my eyes. And it's been working with all of them. So I'm actually gonna show you a look with a drugstore priced palette. This is a Flower Beauty Jungle Lights eyeshadow palette, mixing one of these with water. And then I'm also gonna mix one of the Pat McGrath shades with water as part of the look so you can kind of get a taste for the technique. And hopefully I'll find time soon to come back and do more elaborate play along these lines. I like to think of eyeshadows as art supplies and paints, so I'm not too worried about keeping them precious and perfect. I know that some people go in fear of getting any kind of moisture into an eyeshadow pan because it can cause hard pan or it can cause it to get messed up. To those of you who feel that way, I say, you can get some eyeshadow on your brush, put it on the back of your hand, and then dip a brush, the same one or a different one in water and add drops of water to it and mix together and use that as your little palette. I'm kind of, I'm gonna do that, but I might in the course of things be dipping a wet brush into the pan as a way of getting the mixture onto the brush. But I'm gonna start by putting a dry brush in the pan, depositing shadow on the back of my hand, playing with this during makeup playtime. I've actually also been using my depotting tool and getting like a chunk of eyeshadow and putting it on the back of my hand. This is one of those times when I wish that I could have an overhead camera and a talking heads camera at the same time, but alas, we're not there yet. So now I'm dipping my brush into a little glass of water and dropping the water. I'm just mixing them together, the water and the eyeshadow. And it's making a paste, obviously, right? A paste of water and eyeshadow. My eyes are already primed. I actually primed them before I started the video, even though I wasn't done with my skincare. I don't know why. I don't know what, is. this is like how I'm going, how things are going right now with my one and a half brain cells. I'm gonna paint this mixture onto my lids. I'm going in with a, a fluffier brush that's not sopping wet and getting some of the mixture on it to blend out. Look at that. I mean, these are really pretty shadows. They have a beautiful chrome rich metallic finish, but they don't look like this with just normal application because they it's just become this sort of melted thing that's painted on, but there's so much water that it's like this watercolory effect that's super easy to diffuse towards the edge. And the water, it's such a thin application of water to the lids that it dries and evaporates in almost no time. And it leaves behind this beautifully washed, thinly applied finish. I gotta do the other side quickly before the whole thing dries on the back of my hand by the same principle. The thing that's getting me is that it's so easy. It feels easier than trying to get a similarly diffused, kind of blown out single eye, single eyeshadow eye look with this color dry. It feels easier than that. And it feels harder to mess up, more seamless. And it has this shine, this kind of shine that it wouldn't otherwise have. I'm gonna put some on my lower lash line too. And I love, I just like painting with a, with a paintbrush. Because it's wet, I can swirl it into a point. 
like a paintbrush, but it's painting this, again, kind of watercolory wash that's very unintimidating. I'm getting a, a clean, dry brush to buff it out. I don't want my eye look to be too intense today, so rather than using a darker shade in the outer corner, which is what I usually do, I'm gonna keep my, using my, like, wet, sop, it's not really sopping wet anymore. It's like, it's starting to dry, and there's a bunch of mixed, half dry mixed water and eyeshadow in it. I'm dipping it right back into the eyeshadow, and then I'm sort of dampening the mixture again on the back of my hand. So I'm getting like more shadow and I'm pushing it into this still kind of wet spot on the back of my hand just to get a more intense, more pigmented version of the same paste and make sure that my outer corner is all filled in. I love this so much. I actually don't feel like I want to add the Pat McGrath topper to this look. Or at least I don't want to add it wet because it goes completely bananas when it's wet. If you watched my video about the best wet look eyeshadows, you will have seen it. You'll have seen the way that it looks. I think that if I were to do the same thing, create a mixture like this with this, this Pat McGrath eyeshadow, if I were to create the same mixture with this and paint it on, it would really overwhelm what's here already. And I like what's here already. So I'm actually, I'm just gonna tap a tiny bit of this dry. Yeah, that's all I want today. But I will, I'll have to come back and film another video. What I need to do is to get our zoom lens in the camera so that you can be like zoomed in really tight but still have really good picture quality and correct lighting and film a video where you can really see everything I'm doing and see exactly the way that it's looking when it's being painted onto the eyes. I will try to remember to do that and feel free to bother me about it in like a month if you haven't seen it yet. But for today, at least you've gotten a taste. And I mean, you can do this, you can play with this if you're on a no buy or a low buy. This is a way to make what's old new again because any eyeshadow when mixed with water is going to do something different, perform differently. And the technique just opens up a whole basket of new possibilities for how to structure an eye look and the experience, how to enjoy the experience of applying makeup. Do you think a lot of times when we buy new stuff, new stuff that is in practical terms, just duping what we already have or like repeating what we already have. We're doing it because we're trying to find a new way to enjoy the experience of applying makeup. But maybe water, just water, can provide that. And I know that it's not a new idea to mix eyeshadow with a clear liquid. I know that it's really common. It's like a, a makeup artist's tool, especially to mix eyeshadow with mixing medium and turn it into a liquid. I know that I'm not like the first person to come up with this or something. I just don't see it demonstrated on YouTube, especially not just with plain water. You don't hear it talked about on YouTube. I have never really done this before. I've never like gone through all of my palettes and played with a bunch of different eyeshadows mixed with water and played with wet brushes and played with a, an actual painterly watercolory technique on my eyes. It's been amazing for me and I, I just wanted to bring that to you, to share it with you. I definitely need some mascara, but I think I'm gonna leave off liner and hope that I don't look too weird. Sometimes with eyeshadow on the lower lash line, mascara, and no eyeliner, that waterline can look like really bare like this expanse of bare skin between my eyeball and my lashes, and it can look a little weird. But I'm hoping that the eyeshadow on my lower lash line is pale enough and diffused enough. It is really just a suggestion of a glimmer. I'm hoping that I'll be able to make it work because I don't want to add anything heavy to my eyes, anything visually heavy. That is also why I'm using my current wispiest mascara, which is this one from Chantecaille, and I'm trying not to apply too much for once in my life. I'm going to be roasting Valentine's day makeup releases after this, and I feel like this is an appropriate look for that. I did get a little bit of fallout under my eyes, not from the Flower Beauty eyeshadow, of course, because it was a liquid, but when I went in with a dry Pat McGrath shadow on my finger, a little bit of it dripped down, and I brushed it away with this big fluffy brush, and it did disturb the foundation a tiny bit. Having brushed at it after I had like pressed a tiny bit of powder underneath it. It disturbed it a teeny tiny bit, but going over it with just the brush I used to apply it without any additional product and just pressing, it repaired it enough for me. Okay, let's knock out cheeks and lips. Although I'm worried now that my original plan isn't going to work for my face given what I've just done because my original plan was to use this lipstick. Mm, maybe it'll still work. 
I think it'll still work. So ZC released brown colors in their Dragon and Phoenix lipsticks. So the original Dragon, actually, let me get the other ones. They have the same outer packaging with the Dragon, but the original Dragon lipsticks have Dragon engravings. This is one that I haven't swatched. You can see it just totally untouched. They have Dragon engravings and they have this sort of diamond shaped tip. And this is a new color, M10, in the Dragon lipstick stick formula and it's brown. It's like, it's almost like a raw chocolate kind of color, slightly paler version of Maybelline raw chocolate. And then they've also released a couple of brown shades in the Phoenix lipsticks, which I think it's like the same formula, same everything. It's just that these ones, here's an unswatched one. These ones have bird engravings and they have a teardrop shaped tip. Y'all, Tragedy has just struck over here. I can't believe that I did this. I wanted to swatch them all for you, so I rolled all four of the bullets up and I put them in, in a row on my desk. And I did that because I wanted to be able to see the colors really clearly and have them in number order. And then I knocked the one that I was gonna apply today that I'm still gonna try to apply today, my favorite one, I knocked it off the desk onto the floor with the bullet fully extended and it landed right on the bullet and it completely smashed it. Avert your eyes if you don't want to see this. This was complete clumsiness and user error. I don't think any lipstick would have survived what I just put this one through. <sighs> All things must perish from under the sun, y'all. I'm gonna try to swatch it anyway. Yeah, I'll still be able to use it. It's just not pretty. It's like smashed into the bullet. What a color though. So these are M10, which is the dragon one. And then the other three are Phoenix ones. And it's M15, M16, and M17. So again, the one that's close to my pinky finger is M10. And then going up towards my thumb, we have M15, M16, and M17. And of course, M15 is the one that I smashed, and it's the one that I lost my mind over when I first saw it because of the color. Although looking at them next to my face, I feel like the first one, M10, is probably going to go the best with this look. I love this grungy color right here. It's it's like Maybelline Gone Grage, but a little bit, just a little bit less intensely cool toned, like a little less intensely purple and a little bit more pale. I like couldn't have mixed the color better myself. I'm, I really love it. But I feel like the one time that I don't particularly love that kind of grunge, gray grungy lip and cheek, and what I want to do is put on my lips and cheeks, is when I have pink eye makeup on. So yeah, let's try M10, the first one, and see how it looks on the lips. Like almost all lipstick colors, colors. It's a bit deeper and kind of vampier on me than like it looks like it would be and then you would maybe think that it would be and than it is on most people, but it is a very wearable color. I was reminded last night of how much I love this formula because I, I put this one on, the gray one, the grayish brown one that I really, really love. I put it on, I feel like it was right after dinner and I was just playing with some makeup, but I, ha I had a couple more hours left in the day. So I, I put it on and then I like did a bunch of other things. And then when I went to wash my face at the end of the day, it was like, it wasn't just that it was still on and it looked great. It was that I had sort of forgotten it was there and I didn't feel, I hadn't been feeling feeling sort of delicate about it, which is kind of the thing that stops me many times from wearing cream lipsticks. I feel like I'm going to put them on and then I have to baby them. But even though it's kind of a striking color, I didn't feel that way last night and I don't feel that way about lipsticks in this formula. So it's exciting that they came out with a bunch more colors that are like in my, my palette. Okay, I'm going to use this same lipstick on my cheeks. It makes a nice blush because of how the pigment shears out. And you know, there's no surer way to get a monochromatic look than to use your lipstick on your cheeks or your cheeks on your, your cheek stick on your lips. But I particularly like using my lipstick on my cheeks. I find that lipsticks tend to make better blushes than blushes make lip products. It works better in this direction most of the time. Is that it? Have we done it? Does anything else go into making a person ready to film her new makeup hot takes video roasting Valentine's releases? I guess earrings and, and rings and something other than one's robe as a top goes into it, but I think I'll probably finish this video and then go do those things and then hop back on for the other one. Maybe I'll put a little mole back on. Just checking up on the complexion to see how it has settled and it still looks really good. I feel like with the powder, with a little bit of powder and then with like makeup on the rest of my face, it's a little more apparent now when you examine my complexion that 
it has makeup on it. Although the parts of my face that didn't get much powder or didn't get any powder, like my forehead, my forehead still looks very natural. Like, like you really can't see the makeup. But actually, I think maybe that's because I only put one layer of the Sneaky Balm onto my forehead. It's the parts where I really, really built it up and I put a very thick layer, a second layer on, which probably added up to the equivalent of like three layers of Sneaky Balm. Um, those parts of my face, it still looks very beautiful. The finish is, is still very beautiful, but it's not that totally invisible. I truly can't believe it's not my actual skin thing that I had all over my face with the first application. I loved that look and I could really see myself using this product on days when I'm not actually wearing makeup of any kind really. Like I just want to color correct a little bit and make my skin a little bit more glossy. I mean, I'll continue to wear it for heavy duty makeup as well, especially as I'm testing it. But I'm excited, I'm really excited to pull it out on those days when I'm like, I just need a little bit of something for this redness, but I'm not feeling makeup all over my face. That is it. I hope that this was fun. In retrospect, I feel like I could have called this makeup techniques that don't cost money. Adding water into one's eyeshadows and playing around with them, that's like making what's old new again for free. Using lipstick on your cheeks, I mean, that's not some, that's not new either, but it is something that you might be able to do for the same purpose during your makeup playtime when you're trying to refresh your sense of your own existing makeup collection if you're on a no buy or low buy or a budget. I'm very pleased with the finished look, especially the eyes. There's just something about that watercolory, glossy wash of eyeshadow paste. I mean, it, it looks so wet. My lids look so wet, and that's partly because of the dusting of that very wet look Pat McGrath shadow that they got, but they looked wet before I added that dusting, so the whole thing is very pleasing. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just stop trying to wrap this up and just go. <laughs> Thank you. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself today so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 